lost my lamp. I am Alice. Everybody is still sleeping and I I really need to hurry up. I don't have time for an intro because look, this is my garden and it has been snowing. So I want to make a Christmas dress and I would say I only have like today because it doesn't usually snow over here. So yeah, I'm going to try to make this dress very, very quickly. Oh, I'm actually doing uh, Marine Kitawa Kawa uh, Christmas dress and I am just gonna try and hurry up and do this dress very quickly to just go out and take pictures in the snow because there's no snow! Okay, first stop is for the fabrics. This is my wall of fabrics and I have all my fur over there and I found this amazing red with some sparkle stretch fabric which is very Christmassy like velvet style I don't even know how you call it the typical Christmas fabric that you get but with sparkly things which is very Marine Kitagawa so I'm gonna be using this and uh, fortunately yesterday I patterned all my dress so I have all the patterns for this there's some leather down there that I'm gonna be using for her and the bust as well and I'm gonna be using this and, and see how it goes. So, let's see. Okay, fortunately, I already had cut my pattern and I had made like some calculations of how much fabric I need. And of course, I the case, as it's the case with me, I do not have enough of this lovely sparkly fabric. However, I should have just about enough to do the full skirt and the front pieces. I still need to do a hat and the back piece, but that won't be very seen with the wig. So what I'm gonna do is have these other fabric, which is not exactly the same, same color, but it's kind of like very, very similar without the sparkle. So I'm just going to recycle a little bit and just like, make the hat and the back piece from this fabric. Okay, these are, all, these are all the pieces for the red dress. I have more pieces for the white parts and the, and the other part, but I thought I'm gonna start with these and get it out of the way so I have more space on my table to just be doing stuff. And basically, the first thing I'm gonna do is just put together the front part and the back part, and I'm gonna do the skirt separate and these I'm going to do a bit later so first I want to be doing the front part which goes like this so that's the front part and basically uh, I forgot to do the notches but there's notches to use join them there and basically yeah, I just need to put these parts together you've seen me do this before but basically if I put the pin here where the notches are, I can just twist this a little bit so that matches now and I'm just going to be sewing the front part and once I have the front part I will also be sewing the side which is this part. Make sure you don't move this a lot because otherwise you won't be able to um, they are very similar on both parts, so I always keep my parts together. So basically, again, uh, this goes like this. So I'm gonna be putting these parts together as well. So I'm gonna be sewing those parts together as well on the other side. So this should become like one single piece. It doesn't even look that bad with the black not black, darker red at the back. So I'm just going to be sewing this into one piece and I'll be back. I'm also going to be putting the sides of my skirt together, but just the sides. I'm not doing the back nor I'm making the dress into a dress just yet because I want to try something to make the shoulders 
which I've not done before, but hopefully it's going to be the quicker way of doing things. There's not going to be hand sewing today, unfortunately. I really like it, but it's not going to be the case. So yeah, I'm just going to be putting this very quickly together, just the sides of the skirt. And, uh, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to be sewing the side of the hat as well. Even when I'm in a hurry, or even if you are in a hurry, just don't forget to press those seams. It's not so important with this fabric because it's a bit stretchy, so it's not so not so. But if you can, just try to press the seams a little bit. It will always look a little bit better. to give it a try and see if it fits. This is a dress form that has more or less my, me my measurements so I know that theoretically this should fit me. It is a little bit loose but not too much. I'm just hoping that when I put the straps on it it will get a little bit more like this will become a little bit less flimsy but I, I like where it's sitting because it's supposed to be like quite low. Uh, it seems to be going to the right places, on the side seems to be also quite alright, I could pinch it a little bit, but it was a good idea to check, to be honest, the difference between the sparkly and the not sparkly part is not that bad, so I'm very happy about that, because it's, it's notable but not so notable. And here, I just realised that when I was doing the pattern, because this was changed from a pattern that I had done for kind of like a corset so I had added like a little bit of extra on the back to to close it like that but I haven't taken it off which means I'm gonna have to cut a couple of centimeters from the back but it's not a big deal I'll have to do it from the skirt as well but it's not gonna be very noticeable I will fix that later in my pattern uh, so you don't have this problem as I said you, you never know when something's gonna go wrong so if you can just Always check first, uh, it will look different depending on the body shape and everything. So yeah, I think that should theoretically stay up. And I like the sparkly bits, I love it. So yeah, I'm gonna cut the back, go ahead and start cutting my fur, which I have here. Also a little update on the snow, uh, I think it's starting to melt a little bit because it's changing from rain to snow so whenever it rains it becomes a little bit more icy so I really need to hurry up if I want to have any snow left before I finish this dress so that's, that's right. Just to make my life easier and make it quicker what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Fold this inwards first, and once this is hemmed, which is going to be easier if it's just straight, it's slightly curved, but straight. So if I make this seam first, then I can just sew it in half. So I'm going to hem this, and then I'm going to just be sewing this part together. Actually, I wanted to show you, if you just hem it like that, you're going to have this ugly thing over here. I don't like it at all, so I'm thinking there's several ways you can do it. I can of course do this by hand, but I don't have time. However, maybe if I just line this piece with a piece of fabric, it doesn't even matter what color is the fabric because, it, because it's not going to be seen. I think I'm just going to try and line this just so it's quicker when I do it. Sometimes. Believe it or not, adding a lining is quicker, so I'm gonna try to do that. Okay, the trick seems to have worked, so I'm just gonna try and get all that fair out a little bit. And when I fold it inwards like this, 
we do have a much nicer edge and this is in, this is gonna be invisible and that's gonna be like hidden on the top as well which is great so I'm gonna go for a normal straight stitch on, on this side Okay, I have sewn this piece and basically the only thing I need to do is turn it but I only need to turn this half because the other part is going to stay inside as my lining. So it just goes like this. Uh -huh. And you see that's where we have sewn it together to hide that a little bit. Again, I'm going to be using the brush like that. I'm just gonna iron this and I'm gonna measure the elastic band that has to go over there. Okay, this is the elastic band I'm using. It's just wide elastic band. It doesn't matter like how wide it is, but just get something slightly strong, otherwise they will fall all the, all the time. Uh, I'm just gonna be just sewing them like this and just making like a zigzag or square and across something strong over there to just make it like into a tube like that and you will realize I, ha I have also like sewn this part together like the lining and the fur together just to make sure that they don't move while I'm sewing it and basically what I'm gonna be doing is uh, you may realize that this does not fit so you just want to stretch it a little bit like that and it will be like slightly ruffled when you're not wearing it but it will not be very noticeable and this just makes sure that they will not be um, falling off the this part because this is not stretchy it will fall off if I just leave it like that so I need to just get something slightly stretchy to just get it in place so that is the plan of course I'm gonna be kind of like sewing it on the outside and then when I turn it it will look something like that which is kind of like in the drawing which is good so that is the plan okay I think this was like uh, success somehow like the moment you just turn it up it wants to stay up which is good so I don't need to top stitch nor anything and it seems to be like looks like quite clean to me that looks like a little warmer to me so yeah I'm happy with that I'm just gonna finish the other leg warmer and then I'll go to the shoulders which is the part I'm dreading the most so I'm gonna finish the other one and I'll go back to cutting more fur. I'm just gonna show you very quickly. I have finished both of my leg warmers. That part is done. I have also cut several strips of fabric. I just used the cutter to cut these strips because I'm gonna be folding them in half. So uh, I'm hoping that's not gonna be very visible. So it's very short fur, so it's not gonna make a lot of difference, I don't think. So that's why I did it this way. If it was long hair, I would have done it differently for sure. And then I also started with the pompons. It's just a circle and that's how you do it. I just basted all around it and you just need to pull from your thread like this and it becomes kind of like circle and because before it is completely um, closed what you want to do is ideally you want to use polyfill I don't want I don't have any polyfill so what, usually what I do is use I get scraps from the fur itself because it's very lightweight and it's just like you know you're saving some um, scraps for that so it gives it a bit of volume but without being very spiky on the outside like all the fluff will just hide any unevenness of these kind of things so you just basically you just pull until you close it and then you have a pom-pom and the only thing you need to do is just just close it a little bit and without 
letting go of this thread I'm just gonna just do a few stitches to close it that and yeah once this is done it should be just ready for attaching it anyway so that's how you do a pom pom without having to spend a lot of money buying the ready-made ones. I'm just gonna prepare the fur a little bit like uh, I just need a long strip of fabric to put at the end of my skirt so I'm just gonna be putting these two together and sew the edges. You can take off this edge if you want because it's fair it's not very visible so I'm just gonna keep it to make it a bit longer just in case. And I'm just going to be using a zigzag to to just join these uh, pieces of fabric. I'm just going to be using three of them and there should be enough. Uh, I have left one for the shoulder. Hope that's enough but it's very easy to add more fur and because of the way it is it's very easy to hide the edges so if you need to add a little bit of extra or take away a little bit it's very easy to modify it so I'm just going to be sewing the edges of these ones now and then I'll have a long strip that I can attach to the skirt but before I attach this one to the skirt I'm gonna try and, uh, and do the shoulders as well for the dress and see if the method I have thought works so let's do that So a quick update on the snow, it's not even wanting to focus but because it's been raining there's very very little snow left in the garden uh, I don't know, the forecast says it's gonna snow this afternoon I don't really believe it but we will see Okay, I'm testing this bit over here. It's a little bit tricky because this is non-stretch and you never know until you have already sewn it if you've made this long enough. I've made a pattern with the amount I think will be correct. Uh, I'm just gonna be sewing this like oh, it's full enough, oh. uh, right sides together, fold in half and right sides together and um, basically I will go all around but it's just gonna oh I'm showing everything so I'm just gonna sew it till about here and then the same at the back just halfway through so there's space to have your uh, arms over there and the idea is that I'm gonna put all this fabric which is pretty lightweight and just sew it at the same time as this so I can turn it and do something like a burrito, you will see in a second um, so that should save me time and I don't have to do things but before I do that I'm just going to show you right here this cat Kitana Kitana, what time is it? Is it time for biscuits? Kitana? Is it time for biscuits? It's lunchtime and I have two hungry cats that I have to feed and don't forget that if you want to help me feed them you can just click the like, the comment, the subscribe button, check my patterns if you want, I have a patron and things like that and yeah they will be really happy if you give them some biscuits. Yeah! Biscuits! Biscuits! Come on! Let's try this experiment to call it something. I'm going to be attaching this to this edge and of course I could just like sew this part and then fold it inwards and sew this part but I don't want the stitches to be visible so instead what I'm gonna be doing is let's say let's call it the burrito style way of 
doing this. Okay, this is my burrito. I'm slightly concerned if this is gonna work or not, but you will never know if you don't try it. So if this works, theoretically it will be quicker. You can see the red is just on the sides and the center and everything else. It's, it has all the, all the bodices inside it. Uh, and I'm just concerned on how I'm gonna be turning this. I'm hoping this is wide enough to turn it. I'm just going to be sewing this part with a straight stitch. I will have used the serger, but I thought if this goes wrong, it's going to be much easier to fix something with the normal sewing machine. Um, definitely, I think I'm going to give you instructions to make it by hand, so you don't have to go through all this because it was a little bit difficult to get it through. But if it works, it's theoretically quicker. And this is a snow crunch, so we are going to try it. Okay guys, you know how in this channel I always show you things that work and things that do not work? Well, I, I believe this is one of those things that did not work and yeah, I've been trying this for about 10 minutes and I think the actual technique works you, you can see that if I were to turn this this is correct and, and it's on the right place but unfortunately the fair is so thick that it just it just doesn't want to turn and, and it's it's just like no matter how much I try I'm gonna end up just breaking the fabric and I'm not getting it through it was an interesting idea, but unfortunately it did not work, so I'm just I'm just glad I didn't use the serger, I just used my sewing machine because I'm gonna have to unpick all this. I may not need to unpick it all, but I'm just gonna see if I can just unpick it and turn it and I'm just gonna do that off camera because it's gonna take me a while and when I solve it, I'll tell you what I did. Suppose my camera stopped recording when I was trying to show you what I had done uh, but basically I had to just open the, the sides which were giving me the most trouble because they were very thick so I had to open them in order to be able to turn the rest um, I was able to keep this part sewn which um, is great in a sense but I am now going to have to just close these gaps uh, with probably with a ladder stitch or something rather invisible. And I should have done this beforehand to be honest, but I just searched this part. I'm using the serger for everything because it's it's a quicker machine and it has a nice finish. Um, but yeah, I just searched this part because I thought it would give it a little bit more of a stability. This is a bit flimsy and this is ever so slightly more stable with that little bit um, of surgeon. So I'm just gonna, to finish the top, I'm just gonna be folding this part and just like top stitching around here. Okay, let's do the skirt. Um, again, this is gonna be easier while it's just a skirt. So I think I'm just gonna add the edge before anything becomes more difficult. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just going to be attaching the skirt, the fair part, fold it in half. I just fold the fair in half and I'm just gonna be attaching it to the edge of my skirt with the serger trying not to stretch this too much because this is a stretch fabric so i don't want to do that um, theoretically when i turn it i'll have a nice edge so what's left 
have to do to half the dress almost finished I'm actually gonna um, do this first because I have forgotten but I'm just gonna show you what I will be doing once this is done I'm also gonna be just putting this together just make sure to put together sides like that and I will just like be matching right sides together all the way to the edge the only thing left to do now is to do the back so I'm just gonna make sure I put this together and just match the the seams and everything and just remember I'm gonna be hand sewing the top because I wanna insert some elastic band over here one more update on the dress I think most of the things I did worked. I inserted the elastic over here which makes it definitely more comfortable to wear. I have attached the top to the skirt and finish it. I need to just get a petticoat to go underneath so it's not so bad. However, it is now like half three and unfortunately the situation outdoors is that almost all the snow has melted already there's only a couple of puddles here and there and definitely you can see the sun is going down and I haven't prepared the wig I still have to do the underbust and just do my makeup just basically by the time I were to finish this um, there's not going to be any snow left and by the looks of it there's not going to be any light either so I think it is time to just like admit defeat I could carry on and finish the underbust and everything but I'm actually very tired I've been working since 8 o'clock this morning um, I actually woke up a bit rough as well so I've not been feeling super well today either um, yeah sometimes you just have to learn to let it go and just like wake up tomorrow see what the day brings and just finish with a bit of calm and just just rest so yeah it is the next day there is no snow left but I'm gonna just try and carry on and finish this cosplay nevertheless. But I just want to show you a little bit of the aftermath of my battle with the fur yesterday. Uh, yeah, maybe I need to clean it here. Uh, okay. I've got a bunch of different fabrics like leather like fabrics. But in particular, in particular, I have a lot of this kind of material because I seem to buy it every time I see it. I quite like it because it's thin enough to just make belts and stuff like that, but stiff and it has like a nice texture. So I think I'm going to be using this one. These are the pieces. Um, I didn't leave any seam allowances on top because I'm going to be just using bias tape on the top and the back to finish it so I don't need it. Um, I'm just going to very quickly put the pieces together. It's quite straightforward. Um, I didn't leave enough seam allowances up the front because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. I thought I was going to line it, I think I'm not. I'm going to try a couple of things first. I just didn't want to use a lot of fabric. But basically I'm just going to put all the pieces together, just making sure 
I have these pieces in the correct order because they are very similar, it's very difficult to, it's very easy to just get it wrong. So basically I'm just going to be putting like flat sets together. And just I just put all the pieces together and I'm just gonna sew them these are all the pieces sewn but they need a very good iron so I'm gonna do that and I'll be back in a second Okay, this is how it looks when it's all flat. Just remember to put some kind of fabric on top of your leather kind of materials if you're going to iron them because otherwise you can melt your iron. And what I'm gonna do is I am at least going to do a boning channel at the center, I think. Um, yeah, I have this bias tape, it's way too big. Uh, but otherwise uh, I will never use it so I'm just gonna put it on each of these if I wanted to do it like whole lining not lining uh, if I wanted to put channels on all of it I would just like be sewing like both sides on each one of these um, seams uh, but I think I'm just gonna make a boning channel over here I could have done it with the fabric if I had made it a bit longer, but I did not, so I'm just gonna attach the bias tape here and just turn it inwards uh, and just make a boning channel here at least at the front so it doesn't warp too much. I am 100% cutting corners because I need to finish this before next week when I'm going on holidays to see my family, like most people do. And yeah, I have decided for now, unless it looks horrible, this is quite stiff fabric, so I'm hoping because it's small, it won't give me a lot of trouble. Uh, but I'm gonna try just to put the boning on the front and the back. I have already um, sewn it. As I said, it's it's very big. This one, uh, I would aim for something smaller, but this is what I've got right now. And I am also going to put the boning inside. Um, not even using the good boning. Uh, and you wanna aim like something like. Uh, this is where my bias tape is going to go, so you would like to... Not with nice like scissors, not so nice scissors, just cut it a bit shorter so you can just like insert it and like leave some space over here enough to put uh, the bias tape. I'm going to be using just a strip of the same leather to just bind this because I think it will look better. I have already inserted the eyelets on one side of these and I have prepared this one. It already has the holes, like you can use this punch which is made for just making holes in fabric and the only thing you have to do is just insert these little things. These are the very bad quality ones but it's the only gold ones I have and and you can see that when I press them some of them are distorted and they are not very well set i actually hate them uh, but i it's the ones i have and i don't know if you have noticed but i'm just trying to finish this cosplay i'm not trying to finish it to the best of my standards like there's a little defect here in the fabric and everything i'm not going to try and make it the best i'm just trying to make it very quickly because sometimes you just have to do things quickly and you don't have time to just just do them as nice and to perfect uh, quality standards and that's also alright guys just don't be afraid of just because I do things one way and it looks like oh she knows what she's doing I do not I just uh, will do things just for fun and sometimes I'll take longer and this is just like some shortcuts that I am showing you if I had had time instead of just finishing this like this I would have just lined everything add bone into them, use the proper boning, boning use the, the right eyeless for this, but 
Um, I'm just trying to do this just before next week, so I just want to have it finished and it's okay, don't be afraid of just doing things quickly just for the fun of doing them and do not try to do everything to the highest of standards if you don't want to, it's totally up to you. So yeah, I'm just gonna to, going to insert this. Uh, they are a bit of a pain to insert sometimes, but let's try. So basically the only thing you do is to insert them here. If I had the ones with the little circles at the back, uh, those are much better because they catch the fabric. This probably will pop off eventually. But as I said, I'm not very worried about it. And now with these other two, I just need to press them and theoretically that's now caught in the fabric and it will not move. But yep, yeah, I'm just gonna finish this. I'm gonna add the ribbon to this and a few extra details that I'm missing on the dress, just attaching the pom-poms and everything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish all that and then I will show you the dress complete. And here's the dress finished. I was not able to take pictures in the snow this time, but I am very happy I actually managed to finish it so quickly. Who knows, I may still have time to just take some pictures in the snow at some point. This will be my last cosplay of the year, but I still have a couple of videos to show you before that date. If you want to see me wearing this cosplay, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Maybe if you ask Santa nicely, you will get some nice presents. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful season and I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye! Oh, and it looks like my little helpers have arrived. Hello, Kitana. Hello, Melina. Are you interested in the snow? Yeah? No, you just want to mess with my patterns as usual, right? Yeah, thought so. Really? Uh, I have already chosen the fabric. You can't choose more fabrics. And no, you can't eat my wigs either. Sorry to disappoint you.